Aloha and welcome to PTC 25 in Honolulu, where I'm now joined by Christopher Stodds, Chairman and CEO of Lone Star Data Holdings. And uh, Christopher, welcome to Hawaii. Thank you very much. Aloha. And aloha to you too. And uh, mahalo for doing this interview with us. Mahalo. And uh, that's as far as my Hawaiian goes. Yes. And uh, how many PTCs have you been to? This is my 29th. Oh, wow. Okay. I know, right? Yeah. It's, it's like coming home. I yeah. love coming to Hawaii. You get a snapshot of the whole global yeah. industry. Mm. Um, where it's headed, what's going on, who the players are, what's new, yeah. and it's it's and it's a very sea level event. Because yeah. Hawaii is a lovely place, yeah. and it's January, but it means you can come here. And we, I've been fortunate from my time at McDonnell Douglas and Boeing and Lockheed and then Mansat and River and now Lone Star. I've done more deals at PTC yeah. than anywhere else in the world. Yeah. Well, the world is here. And yeah. we were just talking about how the conference started as a satellite conference, and then it kind of died down on the satellite front. But now it's all coming back again. So, yes. and that's where Lone Star comes in. I mean, talk us through the idea of making the, the moon, because you're looking at the moon. How do you make the moon the ultimate humanity backup storage like facility? Right. Like, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean it's, it's amazing. I look at the moon and I just see it as a huge iPhone mm. or Android phone in the sky. Never per looked at the moon that way, built. but uh, yeah, yeah, I can see it. <laughs> uh, it's so logical to use, it's Earth's largest satellite. <laughs> But this came about because a bunch of customers came to us and said, please help us. We need our data to be safe, secure, accessible, and sovereign. Mm. And they said, you have something to do with space. Could you, could you help us find a solution? And we looked everywhere. Underwater, and deserts, jungles, underneath mountains. We couldn't find a perfect place on Earth. And it's more driven by data sovereignty regulation. Mm. Data needs a passport. Mm. Like yeah. American data can't be stored overseas. Neither can British, neither can Canadian. 106 company, countries have data sovereignty. Laws. So you think, oh, so there's no perfect place on the earth. You can have perfect cooling, you can have perfect power, but it's in the country. Yeah. And you're like, ah. Oh. So we started looking at low earth orbit and geo, and for various reasons, we decided to actually logically go up to Earth's largest satellite. And my team is amazing. This is a team effort. Customer driven, team effort, terrestrial marketplace, met from yeah. space. We're a data center company that uses space. Yeah. But Mark, Dr. Mark Matosian, former Google data center architect, Carol Goldstein, former Morgan Stanley Satellite Finance, Steve Isley, former pre, uh, head of business at Virgin yeah. Orbit, yeah. Um, Will Hawkins, former Commvault, former US Army, Jim Burns Montante, who's, uh, these are my chief operating officers, my, my president CROs, my CFOs my CISOs, my CDOs, yeah. and I'm um, chief engineer yeah, from Honeywell and Draper. I mean, it's, yeah. And it's about the team, it's about bringing space and data together, mm -hmm. leveraging 60 years of sunk investment in the space program and in Silicon Valley, and literally just this convergence that yeah. we're seeing. Yeah. 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 I mean, talking about thinking outside the box, can't go much beyond can't the Can't go box much more beyond that, that, right? Yeah. But I was going to ask, and as if we were speaking to a five-year-old, because uh, we're not very yeah. technical, how does it work? How do you put stuff up there? How do you communicate back down to earth? Um, how does it cope with the space environment? Because I'm sure there's solar winds, there's, there's a lot of different elements oh, yeah, that we don't have on Earth. Yes. So this, this infrastructure has to be way more resilient mm -hmm. um, than anything else that we have down here. How, how does it work for a five-year-old? <laughs> oh, if we were trying to do it from afresh, we couldn't do it. Mm. But we have 60 years from everything from Mercury, Gemini, and the Apollo program to satellite communications where we build amazing machines with antennas and cameras and put them in space. And once they're up there, we can't, can't touch them. We mm. test them on the ground so much, put them on the rockets, take them up. And we're in this incredible radiation environments. We're working on solar power, natural cooling. I mean, we generate type one carbon credits. Mm. It's incredibly environmental. All our satellites are solar powered. Yeah. And then about 25 years ago, the satellite industry solved data sovereignty. So the idea that you, you have your hard drives, mm actually SSDs, working with Fison, an incredible country, company for that. Payload, white space. Gray space, like a data center, is also the satellite, power thermal and comms. Amazing people like Cydus build these things for us. Uh, our, our next one goes up from Space Built, which is an eight terabyte qualified chip, one kilograms, our next test flight goes up at the end of, of uh, February. Hmm. So you can buy them off the shelf. Hmm. And you can, Thanks to Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and others, you have these incredible rockets, but the price has come down dramatically. Yeah. And then when you communicate with them, it's like a satellite, it's radio frequency. Mm. And then optical later, but right now it's radio frequencies. Mm. And uh, you get a license from the ITU, International Telecommunications Union, yeah. the most powerful international organization that Dan Brown hasn't yet written the book about. <laughs> right? And they do all the spectrum, all the frequency, from Bluetooth to cell phones to satellites. Mm. 
And so you get your spectrum, you line it up, license, you yeah. build, you launch, heavily regulated. And that's a good thing. Yeah. I mean, that, that is really the way to go. It's a security yeah. thing. That's yeah. a security thing. It's, uh, I mean, you're putting things in space that only superpowers used to be able to. But now high schoolers can put things up on space station. Everything's changed. Third decade of the 21st century. And all we're doing is saying, terrestrial demand, regulatory solution from the moon for data sovereignty with existing equipment. Hmm. I mean, it's rocket science. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get me yeah. wrong, yeah. right? No, I mean, it's uh, you asked ask for the five-year-old. Yeah, yes. yeah, no, no, but you asked a lot, but you also just put time into respect the third decade of the 21st century, maybe from really old now. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize it was the third decade of the 21st century. It is, 2025, right? It is, it right? is, it is, and everything is changing. Yeah. Um, how does it work, so in, the, in terms of data sovereignty, so there's mm -hmm. no data sovereignty laws in space, but... Oh, what? no, there are. There are, okay, That's talk it. us through. There are data sovereignty yeah. laws in space. Space is the most regulated of all human activities. The hardest thing about getting to space is getting permission. It's incredible. And so that's a good thing. You want your regulator is your best friend. Then? So, thank you. Good question. Um, there's all these international treaties, the UN Outer Space Treaty, the ICU yeah. radio regs, radio regulations. But it goes down to your launching state, your licensing state. To get on that rocket, you have to be licensed by a nation state. Okay. And so, but when you're working in space, we call them hosted payloads. Um, this is how we solve data sovereignty. You can have a black box of electronics from one country flying on another satellite from another country, and whatever happens in that black box is literally like an embassy in space, even though they're sharing power, thermal, and comms. It's all about liability too. Okay. Say a rover from one country pops off the lunar lander and does some damage, well, who's responsible? These treaties, the UN Outer Space Treaty yeah. of 1967, liability regist and registration conventions, they, they talk all the way through this. And again, 60 years of people flying things in space, not just people, but satellites and more, and it all matches up really quite well. And then on the spectrum side as well, it's, yeah. it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. So on Earth, we have national borders. We yeah. have a whole planet. Border laws, yeah. Yeah. In space, heavily regulated, but those national boundaries, quite legally, mm. the proper licensing can be shrunk down onto a mm. spacecraft. Mm. The International Space Station is a great example. People flying on shuttle missions to different countries, yeah. deploying satellites. It's, it's all true human collaboration. Yes. Yeah. How does it work? So if that sort of embassies, do they only serve like there's one asset can only serve one country? Oh, you can or take, you, like can, a, the you can actually split sets. it up. Okay. And you can have dedicated drives, yeah. licensed to one country, country, dedicated drives yeah. licensed to another country, et cetera. Et cetera but never more than one country in the same thing. No. It's still separated. Um, right, this is yeah, like, it's, it's, it's still done human until the end. Yeah. <laughs> what sort of data can go up there? Because Anything. I mean, I'm sure Facebook data can go up there, but uh, medical data probably is not going to go there. No, yeah. yeah. I mean, no, it's as, as in if you're doing an operation from Japan in London. Oh, no, no, we don't do that. Yeah, no, that's so, that's yeah. what low Earth orbit is for. Yeah, okay. That's what regular satellite comms, that's what store, yeah, that's what low latency, Starlinks, OneWebs, O3 Bees, Kuipers, light yeah. speeds. Yeah. Global Star with Apple, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. and Iridium's. Low Earth orbit, low latency. Hmm. Where we are, we're storage, living, breathing, digital twinning of entire yeah. nations and everything yeah. else. We're living, breathing 24 hours a day, but we're farther out. Okay. And that distance helps us. There's, hmm. uh, we have a latency of what, 1.4 seconds, propagation of a radio wave in the vacuum, but each way. Yeah. But that means no TCP IP. Yeah. It means it's nice and secure, customer encrypts, we encrypt the modulation scheme, mm. uh, heavily regulated, as yeah. we should be, <laughs> right? And it's a good yeah. thing. And in essence, we're putting a data Fort Knox mm. up and around the moon. Very interesting. I mean, how much does it cost? How does it work capital-wise? <laughs> well, I mean, it, that's an interesting <coughs> question because you know, we're VC funded, yeah. and it's going, it's, it's, which is a good thing. VCs yeah. don't invest in business plans that don't close. Yeah. And so our first two missions, mm. first mission went up in February last year, 2024. Yeah. We tested everything on the International Space Station in 21, software-defined data center, worked with Ubuntu and Canonical. Mm -hmm. We had an adversarial art network operational. We, we even did, a, I mean, did the basics of a coin and all sorts of data storage stuff. Yeah. Took that, took a version of that, and put it onto intuitive machines, first flight. Mm -hmm. Tested all our tests. We transmitted documents to and from in flight to the moon yeah. and from the surface of the moon. Yeah. Amazing, right? We actually sent the Declaration of Independence as the first document ever transmitted off planet mm -hmm. and brought back the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. This next mission is physical hardware, stays on, same software, stays on the side. This time we've got fitting governments, edge processing, Valkyrie Intelligence doing a knowledge graph. We've got Vince Cerf and the team of the Solar System Internet with Oscar Garcia. They are doing a test of a delay tolerant network. We've got uh, the Exploration Institute doing radiation predictive analysis testing. We've got the guys who built our payload for us, Space Built. Mm -hmm. They're working with Space Works and they have an Armas radiation mm -hmm. center in, inside to test everything. 
and we've got Fison memory chips, micro chip, uh, sorry, Fison memory, give me mm. Fison, Fison SSDs, yeah. and uh, Polifier FPGA chips. Mm. We're probably flying one of the most advanced chips flown yet in space. Yeah. I was going to ask, what, what's the capacity? I mean, I, I don't even know if I can ask you like how many megawatts are up there or you plan oh, to put up there. For is us it megawatts or is it something kilowatts. else? It's kilowatts, okay. It's kilowatts. Yeah. So that's the other thing about spaceflight. When you're looking at spaceflight, you have incredibly efficient equipment hmm. that does a, a lot on very little. Hmm. And equipment that has to last well and be radiation you know, compliant and tested and everything else. And so for us, you asked previously about how much does it cost. Yeah. For us, from going to space, the cost keeps coming down. You saw uh, Blue well, Origin's new Glenn yeah. launching, and you saw Starship getting ready. Amazing. Hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. SpaceX themselves have already, ordered by, by orders of magnitude, lowered the cost of, of launching yeah. to space. Oh, what they're doing is just, from outside of this world, basically. It, it is like, well, yeah. both of them, right? I mean, it's yeah. amazing. It's yeah. so cool. And thank, thankfully, they are. Uh, I, I, I just can be controversial, but I'm like, thank you, hmm. Elon Musk. Thank you, Jeff Bezos. Yeah. You're the two wealthiest human beings in human history, and you're both dedicating your lives to space. Hmm. Yeah, and you and have, have to ask why. It's going to get into it as well at some point. Yes. Oh my um, God. Absolutely. But well, Jeff flew on his own his own first one. I mean, oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> I mean, I mean, think about that. And what is it? Why? What do they see? Hmm. It's not about the money. It's about making a better future for the entire yeah. human race. Yeah. And the place they are in life, it's a different take on this thing. Very. Very. Um, are you looking to raise any capital? You're going to go after more VC? Oh, actually, we're, fi um, we're finishing out a Series A yeah. at the moment. Okay. How much? And uh, it's a 20 million Series okay. A. Yeah. We're just finishing that yeah. out right now. Yeah. And so, you know, we're always happy to extend the round. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's no, there's a lot of money around, so there's, there's well, no shortage of cash. <laughs> well, I, and the thing is, it's, it's, a, it's an excellent market. We've already got customers, we've already got partners, mm. and everyone goes, data centers on the moon? Mm. And when we talk to them about how it's data sovereignty compliant, how it's living, breathing backup, yeah. it's how it's, yeah, it's resilience as a service, it's disaster recovery as a service, mm. it adds a nine. Uh, we work with Cadus, solu Cadus mm. Cloud Solutions. And Scott Jarnigan there, he, he called it, you add a Luna 9 on resiliency, on the point nines. Mm. Mm. Any, any data center we connect to, because it's an entirely independent network. Mm. We don't touch cable fiber anywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's okay, right? Because we're a backup. Mm. We're a resilient backup. Yeah. Far enough away that people can't mess with us. Yeah. And, um, and also far enough away that you can look up at night, mm. no matter what's happening down here, whether it be storms, climate change, wars, accidents, Stage. human errors, <laughs> everything, yeah. right? Yeah. And go, Moon's still there, my data's yeah. safe. It's still going to be there for a few more billion years. No, so a couple, 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 not, couple yeah. billion years more yeah. and stuff. <laughs> yeah, and, our, and, our, and our goal is to actually expand that out. Our next set of missions has been built by Cydus, mm. a fantastic company, run by mm -hmm. Carol Craig and her team, yeah. where we're building these data storage spacecraft, which will yeah. go orbit the moon. Yeah. And that gets us in 24 hour day sunlight, all natural cooling, mm. and we create type one carbon yeah. credits. Completely different. How does it work in terms of redundancy? When you mm -hmm. put one asset in, there's a second one that goes in, so if an asteroid comes in, and boom. Yeah. You still have a second one. Oh no, we always have, yeah. we always have redundancy. We yeah. have redundancy yeah. backwards and forwards. We have redundancy up there. Every spacecraft we launch is more capable, Moore's yeah. law, Yeah. wonderful thing. Team at Fison are amazing in what they're doing with SSDs and, yeah. and, and, the, and the density of that storage. And that's, see, that's the thing. Down here, you've got everyone doing APUs and G, sorry, GPUs and D, GPUs and then, hmm. we take that and apply it to space. Hmm. And on the storage, we take that and apply it to space. And at the same time, when the human race is, every day, creates 2.5 quintillion bytes yeah. of new information, that, so more than yesterday. <laughs> it's an exabyte a day, and it's doubling every two years. It's a thousand petabytes a day. That's a, uh, approximately a million MacBook Pros every 24 hours. More than yesterday, and it's doubling every yeah. two years. And then throw in large language models and everything that's changing there. Yeah. Throw in quantum computing, it's like well, this explosion explode the whole of data. Yeah. Like a software defined future, mm. but a data driven future. Yeah. It's the most valuable asset we as a species, mm. outside of ourselves, mm. have right now, is our data. Yeah. And we've never had this option to protect it before. Mm. And this idea that we can do this meeting data sovereignty, we can do this in a way that is actually very good for everyone involved, using existing tech, and all of a sudden, evolved tool using apes mm -hmm. can go, hey, we don't have to suffer another library of Alexandria, a data loss so bad, we still talk about it 2,000 years later. Imagine if that happened today, and it almost has. Yeah. I mean, we do daily loss. We're there to back you up daily and yeah. all the things that happen yeah. every single day. Yeah. But there's also the big stuff that happens too. Uh, cyber weapon got loose back in 2017 called Not mm. Petia. 
Uh, that, was, that came out of Ukraine and Russia. Ukrainians, oh my gosh, those poor people, they were going through enough already. This wiped out 80% of all data. And it got loose in international networks. Yeah. It was a cyber weapon. It was a weapon of mass destruction that got yeah. loose. Yeah. And it came really close. Yeah. There's been several others. Yeah. There's, yeah. Like, there's a lot of warning bells going on. We need, we need to come better. But how far can you push this technology in space? I mean, mm -hmm. Of course, we, we probably don't need one in Mars right now, but could we already... Oh, no, we, we want to go to Mars. No, no, Mars will have its own edge processing, its own systems. But then systems who are you serving Mars? Would you have to wait for a human community, or you, oh, or you would you just You could actually have a lot of robotics going on, IoT, yeah. you could serve you, a lot of processing. machines, okay, fair enough. Yeah, and yeah. then also when people go too. Yeah. I know, but what we're doing is eminently scalable, mm. and that's the great thing. It's all off the shelf. If we, as we grow with our customers, mm. we go, right, we can do, right, what do you need? Right, we'll just build to that, off we go. Mm. And it's, again, third decade of the 21st century. Yeah. We actually already now have flying cars. Yeah. We, we went to the moon over 55 years ago with and people. Our, and our cell phone has more power than yes. that spaceship had. So. Yeah, so we have all of those advantages, all those benefits, mm. but all that knowledge to draw upon and mm. an incredible team of people to do it yeah. um, uh, look, My wife is a retired astronaut, amazing, space mm. walker and all oh, those great wow. things. And she always says, the moon is so good for data storage, if it wasn't there, we'd have to build it. That's, yeah. that's the best tagline. That's what you should have on your website. <laughs> we do. <laughs> oh, you do? We okay, do. sorry. I uh, oh, no, the other one is <laughs> saving Earth, saving Earth's data one byte at a time. Yeah, I think the, the, right. the first one, your wife's one it's is. The, yeah, yeah. It's, on, it's on there. Yeah, that's yeah. a sound bite. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> and, and another question to think about is, what happens if we don't do this? Yeah, yeah. what's right. alternatives? And when you look at a, it's not. It's not good. Not that, no. No, it's not good. Even the underwater data centers haven't really worked out that much. No. Um, and that's one. And that's, yeah, there's only so much you can push the boundaries on Earth. Well, the Titanic was an unsinkable ship. Mm. And we look at data and they need to protect it. And as do our partners, mm. as do our customers. And we say, yeah, guys, time out. Okay, mm. we have the ability to do that chessboard. This new piece has appeared on the chessboard. Mm. Yeah. This new ability, let's use it now. Mm and head that off in the future. Hmm. It's actually wonderful to see our partners do yeah. this because, and it gives me faith that they're looking after our data and they are. Hmm. Fantastic people like Flexential and others doing a great hmm. job. Okay, fair enough. So I'm not going to keep you for longer. That's okay. I know you're, you're busy Sorry, well. I know, so, I'm sorry. But last question, will we meet here again in 2026 for PTC26? What's the one thing you would like to have changed, being achieved by the industry? Uh, I mean, maybe a data center operator comes to you and be like, I want you to be our data center in space. What, what's your wish for the next yes. 12 months when we come back? <laughs> no, actually, I, uh, we, 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 my team have put so much effort mm. into this next mission. Mm. We're opening up a whole new industry. Mm. No one's ever done this before. And what we want to be able to do is prove it, show it, mm. and then we'll be well underway with our work for our existing customers mm. as well. Mm. I mean, we hit revenue last year with our first mission. We'll be in revenue this mission, and we're going to push through. Yeah. We want to have proper plans, pilot projects in place to make sure people's data is safe. I think what you just said, making profit out of it, is very important. Mm -hmm. um, because one of the conversations that we used to have in the old days, when I, when I did some pieces on data centers in space back in 2016, 17. Mm -hmm. Oh, the old days. This oh my gosh, oh, yeah. it feels sorry, like sorry. yesterday. Oh, well, I we, oh, we were in the third oh. decade of the yeah, 21st sorry. century, sorry. Oh. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the second decade of the 21st century. But, but people, yeah, the, the half the, the, yeah. the second. But uh, people used to say, it will never happen because it's too expensive. No one's going to want to put $100 million in space to be shot down by an asteroid. Mm -hmm. But I think if you're being able to prove the case, then I think this is probably going to change very quickly. Yeah. Well, the I'm price of putting the equipment okay. has come down so radically. Uh, plus that, yeah. The equipment's got so much better. But there's a business I mean, cases there. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. No, yeah. That, I we, think, that, that, I think yeah. that's the biggest change since then in the last 10 years. You can say 10 years, Jesus. But the last 10 years has been that, yeah. like, there is the business case now. There's the sample, the example, the, the blueprint mm -hmm. of how to do it. And it's 100%. To, yeah. 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 And I think maybe that's where things are going to change. So maybe next year we're going to see a lot more uh, satellites. Oh, you will do. More, more yeah. things being thrown into space. <laughs> lots <laughs> more. Oh yeah. no, lo lots more. And it's already happening around us. And it's a natural progression that's going to mm. work. Mm. It's good. Mm. It was nice to be here at PTC and see space come back in. Yeah, well, it was on the main in. stage this morning on the opening, on the opening session, yeah. which hasn't been, at least in the, the last four years since I've been exactly. coming here. So, so Christopher Stott, Chairman and CEO of Lone Star Data Holdings, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you. Um, as for your home, thank you for watching. And don't forget to check our website and social media for the latest, latest digital infrastructure news from across the globe. At the Tech Capital, you lead, we report. Bye for now. Thank you.